why is it so hard to leave a covert narcissist? What's with that, right? Like, why is it the hardest thing to leave someone when you see exactly what's happening? What is it with these covert narcissists? Let's talk about that. My name is Lise Colucci, and I'm here to help you understand, recover from, and transform your life after toxic relationships. So the covert narcissist is so sneaky. It is such, they're the type of people that are so sneaky and so stealthy with the narcissism that, I mean, we've talked about this a lot of times, the signs of covert narcissism, the, you know, what to expect from covert narcissists, how they act in certain situations, but why is it so hard to leave them? I mean, I think the answer really is that because of the covert behavior, because everything is passive aggressive and underhanded and, and behind the scenes and only witnessed by you and only coming towards you, and there's such an element of them playing the victim and them playing the, the mind twisting games that they play in order to avoid accountability, that you get completely lost your whole side of things gets completely lost. You even lose touch with who you are yourself and how you actually feel about things because you're so busy trying to figure out what actually happened that you just go day to day. And the thing is, they almost always will hit you with the nice attitude and the, and the friendly side. And they'll ride that for a little while before they swing back around with the toxic behavior, or they'll weave in the toxic behavior with the nice stuff. So you're not only with Jekyll and Hyde, you're with Jekyll and Hyde, like combined, as in hyphenated, right? So it's not Jekyll and Hyde, it's Jekyll slash Hyde, right? So it's very confusing and manipulative and toxic to be around the covert narcissist. And your mind is so busy trying to make this relationship work with this nice person who just has problems or this nice person who seems to only have problems with you or you seem to be the only problem in the world. And so maybe it's you in the first place. All right. So we have to step aside a second and look at the situation and get some help sometimes. And if you need help with that, please check out the information in the videos or seek it elsewhere, because this can be something that requires some speaking, some validation and some awareness around. So you can see whether or not you wish to stay in a relationship with someone like this. The covert narcissist has an illusion and a mask of innocence about them. And that mask of innocence and that mask of vulnerability and the mask of, of, you know, the victim or the nice person or the misunderstood one is so real, is so realistic. And you believe so much in it because you're always being pulled by empathy by these people. You are connected to that narcissistic person through your empathy because they have used your empathy to gain control over you. And they know how to play that empathy so that they stay in a seat of power and you won't leave them. Okay, a lot of vulnerable covert narcissists are fearful of being left. And in fact, a lot of covert narcissists who are vulnerable, when they are left, will tell the next person how they were abandoned, how they were left, how their partner just, you know, turned on them and left them. So they will play victim continually on and on, feeding off the empathy of other people. Well, if you're an empathic person and you're in love with this person, or you were, you feel like it's part of your responsibility to hang in there with it, to stick by them, to support them, to not leave them, right? It's all about them. There's never anything in it for you. There's never anything in it that's for the relationship itself or for you within the relationship. You're giving a whole lot and you're getting a little, except that you're getting the good side of the toxic person on occasion. The other piece here that I will touch on real quick is that other people don't see it. Other people in your life, think this person is amazing. Other people in their life comment on how amazing they are. People see them as a good guy, good gal, right? So often that they can repeat back to you how many people told them they were amazing today. You know, like how many of us have that? <laughs> Where, But see, they're out there seeking it. They're out there looking for that sort of supply and attention from people so that they can collect the data to convince themselves of the delusion that they have about themselves that they are the good guy. And in fact, they may do things that are good guy gal, right? 
but they're done so that other people see them so that they get the attention, the, the admiration and can keep living the delusion that that is who they are. What they're not showing anybody else is the gaslighting, the projecting, the lack of accountability, the bad moods, the grumpiness, the detachment, the withdrawal. They're not showing anyone else the shutdown. They're not showing anyone else any of these toxic things that go on within the relationship. So that's why it's reserved only for you, my friend. Sad as that is. Okay. And because it's reserved only for you and the rest of the world sees this person as something wonderful, how are you supposed to feel? Pretty isolated, I would think, right? Pretty much like, I mean, how do you feel when you're in that situation? For myself, I felt completely alone. No one sees this. This is, I make this move to leave. I have no support because everyone will think you're the problem, girl, right? So yeah, it's, it's tricky. And you're even afraid to tell therapists or counselors or coaches about what's going on because you think that they're going to say something that it is you. Or when you do tell, like people who talk to me will say things like, well, I know this is probably me and I'm pretty sure this is this part's me. And they will put a lot of it back on themselves. And I don't ever want to tell someone you're 100% completely innocent because we do engage in these situations. And that would be a lie, right? Like we do engage. And there are things about us that if we were in a healthy relationship would not be so healthy to be doing. However, we have to remember that we're being manipulated and we're being controlled. And so our reactions are just that, they're reactivity. And so because of the reactivity, that can be another reason it's hard to leave because you're seeing where you're putting in some kind of toxic stuff or putting in some not so positive stuff toward the relationship. So these are all reasons that it might be really difficult to leave a covert narcissist. They are very difficult to leave and it is a very difficult situation. So please get help if you need it. If you're dealing with this, please hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button if you are enjoying these videos so that I know which content you guys like best. Leave me comments if you are inclined to do so. And if you have any questions or if you want videos made or anything like that, please leave comments. I'm always happy to help answer and try to get those videos out there for you. You guys take care and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.